you might have a pretty reasonable question, which is, why was I on the side of a hill drinking coffee? Was it just for the cinematic shots for YouTube? Well, no. No, it was for a perfectly good reason. It was for this review, which is for the Wakako Nanopresso. And I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Now, this is a brewer that I bought for about 70 pounds. And for that, I get the standard Nanopresso and I get this, which is the uh, Nespresso pod adapter for it, which actually might be quite a good thing. We'll come to that in a second. Now, this has been heavily requested by people in the comment section of various videos on Instagram and on Twitter. And that can send you in two different directions. One, you can think lots of people wanna see this. I should get one of these. I should do a review. But then part of you is aware that many, many companies pay people to go to comments of people like me in YouTube and ask them to review a product. It's kind of part of street teaming, part of marketing. So I was a little bit wary. They had actually sent me one in the past and uh, I, I just, I don't think I tested it that much. I didn't really focus on it at the time. It wasn't really that interesting to me, but so many requests have had me circle back and do what I hope is justice to a review. So let's just quickly run through how this thing works. You have a water chamber here at the back that holds 50 to 60 uh, mils or grams of water. That's gonna be hot water that you put in just before you brew. And you close it up and then into this section here is where your coffee goes. Now you dose your coffee into this little section here. And when you brew, the, the coffee will be underneath and this will actually be your shower head on top here. And it'll be filtered like the bottom of the basket through here on its way to the cup. And when it's time to brew, you pop out this little plunger and you're gonna use this and pump it to build up the pressure to brew the coffee. Now they say you're gonna brew more than enough pressure to brew espresso. Uh, and I think that's probably true from using it. That's been my experience. If you wanna brew Nespresso capsules, and it doesn't have to be an Nespresso brand, it can be anything compatible with that. You just take out this brewing section and then this one comes uh, with a slightly adapted uh, filter section that's there to sort of pierce the foil and then the capsule holder with the spikes at the bottom to pierce the capsule where the water flows in. Pretty easy, pretty simple to use. Lots of little pieces that screw together. But how's the coffee? That's what you're thinking, that's what you wanna know. Well, let's brew some coffee and talk about it. Now this thing does come with a scoop that is frankly uh, a better tamper than it is a scoop. Really, this is a strong indication that this product is designed for people who are gonna buy pre-ground coffee to make espresso with. And you'll know if you go to a supermarket and buy coffee that's ground for espresso, it's not ground for espresso. It's usually much, much, much coarser because it's gonna go into a mocha pot. Some people are gonna brew it as filter coffee. So they go for that kind of omni-grind, middle of the road way. That's important to realize. This brewer is a little bit finicky to dial in with fresh ground coffee because of this. It's designed to work with coarser coffee than you would typically use for espresso. That makes it a little weird to brew with. Now it does have inside it a little pressurizing device that I'll take apart in a second that adds extra pressure where the coarsey ground coffee maybe can't, similar to a pressurized porter filter. So as I'm building pressure now, I get what looks like an espresso coming out of here. You can see there's some crema, not very much, it's pretty pale. But at this point, this was ground nearly at kind of pour over coarseness. If you go finer than this, it doesn't work well at all. Ooh. It seems my coffee's a little fine this time, even though I got a bit coarser. We have a little leakage if you take out the, the pressurizing device, that little spring inside there, which they say you can do, I had bad results with that as well. So here you've got some kind of wispy crema, you have a kind of okay drink, but it's not a patch on what a good manual espresso machine can make. Regardless of the, the claims to the pressure it can build, and they say things like 18 bars, the same way that manufacturers will say it'll do 15 bars of pressure, 18 bars of pressure, who cares when you want nine? Most of the time they're just leaking that pressure out the side just so you hit that rough kind of nine bar uh, number assuming they're set up right. So more bars is not good. Bragging about doing 18 is just weird. The end result of this course of ground coffee that you sort of need to use with this as it's set up, well, not great. Not great at all. Maybe we should try with a pod. 
maybe a pod would be better. So a little Nespresso capsule into our little device. And there that's all ready to go. And actually compressing that into place pierces the capsule with the little um, forks or, or I don't know what the word you'd use is, tines almost, that, that sit inside this unit where the water will flow in. And the way an espresso capsule typically works is that you inject water uh, in the sort of narrow point of it and it flows through and once it hits the foil it blows the foil out until it compresses against a crisscross pattern piercing the foil. So you have this additional kind of pre-infusion pressurizing moment before the coffee starts to flow, even in a device that may have an additional pressurizing unit like a spring in there as well. And away we pump. And you could hear the pod burst in there. It's certainly a bit of work to push. And but lo and behold, creamy, creamy crema. This looks much uh, more akin to something that you might expect as espresso. So this espresso is 25 grams of liquid from about five and a half grams of coffee. So that's a five to one ratio, which is well outside the bounds of espresso being some in the region of one to two, uh, lungo one to three, one to four. This is coarser again, bigger again, weaker again, but it will likely be very well extracted, which it is. It's also pretty dark roasted coffee in this particular pod, which is what I had to hand here right now. But I'm left unsure about how I really feel about this thing. On paper, it should work fine. You can build nine bars or more of pressure here, though I find the sort of pumps per second thing a little fuzzy as a way to build pressure. And there's not really much feedback beyond the physical feedback of it becoming harder to compress the little pump. Brew temperature wise, you're unlikely to be in the mid nineties because you're just gonna lose too much heat. There's not enough thermal mass in the liquid. Uh, here, it's going to be a, a lower temperature brew and so probably does better with slightly darker roasted coffees than it would do lighter roasted coffees. But I'm left with the question of why? And that's kind of why I went up a hill and I took some pods with me up a hill and I sat and I brewed coffee in the great outdoors uh, and I took a thermos of water and, and actually Wakako will sell you their own brand of thermos to take water with you. And with a pod and water, it's reasonably practical to be almost anywhere and to brew an espresso. And so I sat in the morning in the quiet of the forest and I made myself an espresso and I sat there and I drank it and I thought, is it worth it? Is it worth the effort to bring this thing with me? Is it worth it to make coffee this way? You know, is this the kind of camping travel device that I would want? And while the coffee I brewed wasn't bad by any stretch, and while it was extremely pleasant to sit in the forest, sit on a hillside and enjoy an espresso, what I really wanted was a cup of filter coffee because my espresso was gone and my moment of savoring it was very short. And I, I, I wanted to sort of linger. I wanted to take my time. I wanted to enjoy a coffee. And the problem with espresso is that it's this brief moment and the aftertaste lasts and lingers and that's pleasant. But I wanted to spend some time with a cup of coffee. I'd worked hard to climb the little hill. I was tired, I was out of breath. I wanted to sit down on my tree stump and relax. And I found myself after five minutes thinking about packing up and cleaning up and moving on. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you do want espresso in that moment. And actually, I think if you're using a, a good quality pod, Let's not talk about pods right now, that's a whole other subject, but if you're using something like that and a thermos of hot water, then sure, that's pretty easy. You can have an espresso any way you want. Now with fresh ground coffee from an espresso grinder, I actually found this thing fussy and irritating to dial in. And the dose also is kind of an issue. You can get six or seven grams of coffee in this thing. I think I just want more. You know, I'd probably, frankly, have to brew twice to have enough caffeine in my system to feel human in the morning. And hey, hey, maybe that's just me. That's just me. But I don't want to brew twice with this. It's it's not a joy to take apart and clean. It's not super simple. It's not difficult. It's, you knock the puck out, give the whole thing a rinse. It's pretty easy, but it's not fun for me. I didn't have a huge amount of fun with this. Now, I'm sure lots of people do, but I think the use case for this where this really shines is actually really pretty narrow. If you've got a decent enough espresso grinder at home, you may as well have a good espresso machine at home built for finely ground coffee to get true, real, delicious espresso. Something like the Flare or the Rock, and I'll be reviewing the, the Cafe Lat Robot soon. You know, something like that if you want to go purely manual, and there's a ton of options beyond those as well. 
I, I feel like this isn't really a device for the home. I feel like if I'm taking it outside, I'm definitely using pods. It's just easier and certainly much easier to brew a second or third or fourth time if I'm with people and just less mess, fuss and all that sort of stuff. But for me, I don't really want to drink an espresso in those environments. I'd rather take a travel brewer. I'd rather take a thermos of coffee up the hillside with me that I brewed at home in the morning and sit and enjoy something really well made. But that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Your experience may differ. And I'd, I'd be interested to hear your experiences with this thing. Do you have it and love it? Am I am I missing something really obvious here? Are you are you grinding finely for it? Are you grinding reasonably coarse? What are you, what are you doing with it? Tell me in the comments below. I'll be really interested to see what people have to say about this thing. At 70 pounds, it seems pretty well made. There's lots of little parts. Uh, it seems to be you know, pretty well put together, pretty durable. I have no real complaints about that. Uh, I just, I just didn't love it, if I'm honest. There you go. I'll wrap it up here and I'll say thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. <laughs>